Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Now, since we've been looking so closely at the final year of the Clone Wars recently, I've actually started to pay a lot of attention to Jedi Master Yoda and his behavior. I'm wondering what exactly he could have done to prevent the Jedi Purge and the destruction of the Republic. There's a part of me that believes that Master Yoda understands what's going on behind the scenes around him. There's a part of me that believes that he even foresaw the great darkness that was approaching the Jedi. Maybe Yoda realizes that visions of the future are oftentimes incomplete and more importantly, impossible to alter and change. And those who try to change their fate like Anakin Skywalker will fall to madness, anger, and despair. There's a second part of me that believes, however, that Master Yoda has just fallen a step behind. With age comes great wisdom, but a millennia of being alive can also lead to comfort, decay, and closed-mindedness. No matter how amazing Yoda is as an individual Jedi, no matter how wise his actions might seem, he was also responsible for running the Jedi Order, which of course at this point was full of overly dogmatic and conservative Jedi who were fighting extremely hard to protect a completely dysfunctional system. So did Master Yoda just kind of let things go to hell because of incompetence, or maybe he did it purposefully? Whatever the case was, he was definitely being outclassed by Darth Sidious. And so today we're going to be looking at every major mistake Yoda made in that final year of the Clone Wars. The attack on the Jedi Temple hangar, which led to the deaths of several civilians, clones, and Jedi, was a clear sign that Palpatine's plan to destroy the image of the Jedi was working. Instead of the galaxy being sympathetic towards the Jedi for technically being the victims of this attack, there were protests outside the gates of the Jedi Temple over the handling of the incident. The Jedi have this very special relationship with the Republic. They are technically servants of the Republic because they receive funding and support from the government. But at the same time, there are no checks and balances on the Jedi from outside public organizations. And so when Chancellor Palpatine makes an overt move to take a little control over the Jedi Council by appointing Anakin Skywalker, it wasn't necessarily considered a controversial move. There are definitely a lot of people in the galaxy thinking, well, if the Jedi are supposed to watch over all of us, then who is supposed to be watching them? And without these checks and balances, a sort of bubble was created around the Jedi Temple. They were in every way an elite group and protected class that were far removed from the consequences of their actions. And so the bombing incident and the reaction from the Republic civilian populace should have awakened the Jedi Order to just how they were being viewed in the wider galaxy. Master Yoda should have focused a lot more attention in reaching out to the civilian populace and developing a much better image for the Jedi. There are now clearly people in the Republic who hated the Jedi and blamed the Clone Wars on them. When Ahsoka Tano was framed for the bombing of the Jedi Temple, the Jedi Order's move to kick her out was very politically motivated. Yoda realized that the Jedi Order's approval ratings were down in the dumps. Trying to protect one of their own, despite all of the circumstantial evidence pointing towards her being guilty, would worsen the Jedi Temple's relationship with the wider galaxy even more. And since the Republic military and judicial forces had no jurisdiction over the Jedi, the Jedi had to remove Ahsoka first from their own order. But this Jedi trial held by the High Council was a complete farce. There were no lawyers present, no evidence presented, or witnesses interviewed. Each Jedi in the Council basically just made their own decision based on how they felt about the situation. This trial was essentially complete nonsense. With so many Jedi now involved in the Republic military, the Jedi Order should have realized that this situation would have eventually occurred and that they should have reformed their trial system in a way that was more modernized and based on rule of law. Master Yoda should have made this type of reform a priority. This way, when they do decide to kick someone out of the order, it's not based on personal beliefs or opinions or politics or, you know, what kind of relationship the Jedi High Council has with that individual. It should be based on a fair and normalized legal system. When Clone Trooper Tup shot Jedi General Tiplar in the back of the head, this should have resulted in a full Jedi investigation on the matter. Clone Trooper Tup had no motivation to hit Tiplar and had shown no prior signs that he wanted to harm her. Jedi Master Shakti believed that this incident was somehow related to the Separatist Alliance and somehow they had developed some kind of weapon to trick clones into shooting their Jedi Generals. 
When Tup reaches Camino, the Jedi should have a full investigation team waiting there to receive him and kind of figure out what was going on with him. And at the least, when Shakti realized that the Kaminoans were trying to hinder the barrage of tests being run on him, they should have shut the Kaminoans out of the investigation and taken Tup back to the Jedi Temple as soon as possible. Also, we have to remember that Fives basically is able to tell Anakin Skywalker and Rex what exactly is happening, that how Palpatine is somehow involved in this inhibitor chip kind of scandal, which is designed to harm Jedi. The Jedi should have at least investigated those claims instead of just accepting Palpatine's version of the story that Tup and Fives went crazy after contracting some rare parasites and this was somehow an isolated incident. Even though Five seemed a little bit crazy and out of it when he told Anakin and Rex about this conspiracy, there were enough signs that something was wrong with the clones that the Jedi should have probably pursued it with their own investigation. Especially concerning the fact that the Jedi sensed that someone in the shadows was moving against them. I sense a plot to destroy the Jedi. The dark side of the Force surrounds the Chancellor. To make matters even worse, it was later revealed that Jedi Master Severodius, creator of the clone army, was actually murdered by the Pike Syndicate on behalf of Separatist leader and former Jedi Count Dooku. Count Dooku was the one who would actually take over this Kaminoan contract and design the clone army for the Republic. This means that the Jedi are fighting with soldiers created by the leader of the enemy faction. This revelation on top of the Jedi Templar incident should have made Master Yoda reassess the Jedi's role in the military. At this point of the war, the Outer Rim sieges had started, the Republic had the upper hand, and were mainly now on the offensive. The Jedi could have realistically stepped back from the front lines at this point and allowed the clones to take over these operations. At this point, it becomes pretty clear that the Jedi are in danger from their clone troopers, and they should probably get to the bottom of this clone trooper separatist connection and figure out what is going on. The inhibitor chips would need to be analyzed, along with any other significant genetic modifications made in these clones. Master Yoda's best move here would be to excuse the Jedi Order from fighting within the Grand Army of the Republic. I mean, the Republic were basically about to win the war anyway. It was time now for the Jedi to retreat from society and analyze what effect the war had on their order and what changes they need to now make. Later on, Grandmaster Yoda goes on a journey to the planet of Dagobah for the first time and enters that very famous cave and has a vision that closely resembles Order 66. One of these scenes that he sees clearly shows the Jedi Order fighting against the clone troopers. On top of everything else that we've mentioned that's happened so far, Grandmaster Yoda should have connected the dots by this point. He could probably figure out by himself now that someone has corrupted the clones and ultimately they will turn against the Jedi. Now obviously Yoda is too smart to have the Jedi directly attack the clone troopers that would just turn the entire galaxy against the Jedi Temple. But he can start to secretly inform the members of the Order that a plot was underway against the Jedi and was most likely going to come from the clone troopers. This way at least some of them can start building contingencies in case something does happen. When Yoda is later on attacked and betrayed by his own clones during Order 66, he clearly isn't surprised, which makes me believe that he knew this attack was coming. When Yoda goes on a mission to figure out the secrets of immortality, he has to go through several very challenging trials. During this process, Yoda had to face many of his own internal demons and fears. In one of these incidents, he actually ends up on a mission to Coruscant to confront the Sith Lord behind all the craziness happening in the galaxy. In this scene, we actually see Yoda duel Darth Sidious. I know in this case, the Sith Lord is wearing a hood and Darth Sidious sounds a bit different from Palpatine, but this is very much like a Kent Clark Superman kind of situation. Yoda should have immediately recognized who he was dealing with. At this point in time, it's almost impossible for Yoda not to connect the dots and understand that something was off about the clone army, something was potentially wrong with Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. It's almost as if Yoda was actively trying to ignore these things. Now, Yoda eventually does learn how to become immortal, or at least he starts his training to become immortal. But when he comes back to the Jedi Temple, he doesn't confide in his fellow Jedi Masters about what he's learned. He literally says that the trip was uneventful. Afraid 
Not much there is to say of my journey. Now, obviously, Yoda would need to keep this knowledge a secret from the majority of the galaxy and even probably the majority of the Jedi Temple, but he should have discussed his findings with the High Jedi Council because this event was large enough to shape the entire Order's understanding of the Force. Yoda also comes to a conclusion after these trials that the Jedi should really step back from the war and no longer continue fighting in it because it was clearly affecting the Jedi in a very negative way. In the extremely underrated Dark Disciple novel, which occurs after Season 6 of The Clone Wars, the Jedi Council come to the realization that Count Dooku is way too dangerous and needs to be immediately stopped. The Jedi are ready to consider almost any option at this point, including assassinating Count Dooku. There's a pretty big debate within the High Jedi Council on whether it's ethical for the Jedi to assassinate individuals or even commission an assassination. Ultimately, Yoda does allow the Council to commission this mission, but instead of hiring assassins or mercenaries or just having the Republic take on this task, the Jedi decide to instead use one of their own, Quinlan Vos. To make matters even crazier, they want him to go undercover and recruit the help of Asajj Ventress, a former apprentice of Dooku who wants revenge against him after he ditched her in the middle of a battle. This was an ill-fated mission from the very beginning. It's just ethically wrong. It goes against everything the Jedi Order stands for, and Yoda should have never approved this mission in the first place, but we're not gonna tell you exactly what happens because I think you should read the book. It's pretty awesome. When Order 66 finally does happen, and Yoda escapes and meets Obi-Wan Kenobi, the two decide to confront the Sith. Yoda makes the big mistake of splitting up with Obi-Wan Kenobi and tackling both Anakin and Palpatine at the same time. He should have known that Anakin does not pose nearly as much of a threat as Palpatine. Anakin was hot-headed, angry, and very powerful, but he lacked the cunning of Darth Sidious and was not a threat in the larger scheme of things. Just as Kylo Ren was not really a threat when Snoke left, his leadership of the First Order was abysmal. And so I believe Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi should have confronted Palpatine together, and in this case, they might have even succeeded, which could have ended the Sith threat once and for all. Instead, Yoda decides to have an epic showdown with Palpatine by himself that ends in a pointless stalemate and a huge missed opportunity. So there you have it, guys. Those are what I believe are some of Yoda's biggest mistakes in the last year of the Clone Wars. I'm sure I've missed a few, so let me know in the comments section below about the ones that I've missed. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.